Hey everyone, welcome to episode 25. Apologies for the delay as we were out of town for a bit on vacation, but we're back both here at Heroic Nonsense and on my boy's kids channel, Rymai's Toy Emporium, link below, and here for any of you who have kids in your families who may be interested in a kids channel made for kids by kids. All right, let's jump right back into it with the full review of the truly evil and calculating predator or the completely loyal and short-tempered but polite Decepticon guardian Skyquake, depending on which continuity you follow, with this spot being more specifically based off of his prime design as adapted for the Legacy Evolution line. I wasn't planning on getting him, but I did recently pick him up on sale for something like half the price off, which I'm glad I did because he was totally worth it. Let's take a look at why as we explore Skyquake together in this week's review. First off, he's a big, imposing figure, which is nice to have on the Decepticon side. He is the size of what I think Astro Train and Blitzwing should have been, which we'll discuss more of in a bit. Otherwise, his overall Enforcer aesthetic is consistent throughout the figure, and he has some really nice details, especially around the shoulders and the wings, as well as on the back in both jet and robot mode, which I like a lot. Overall, a very cool figure that would look great as part of your Decepticon ranks, even if he is based off of a Prime Universe line. So, looking at him in a bit more detail, let's start with his overall look, which is complemented nicely by his Gatling gun, which can be held properly as one would expect of a Gatling gun. While his color scheme is mostly monochromatic, he does have some major silver accents punctuated by a bit of red highlights. I've always loved the Jet Decepticons because of how their wings are placed in bot mode, and Skyquake is no exception. You can also play around a bit with his wings to create some different looks. I also like the way the devs smoothed out a lot of his contours to both make him look imposing but also sleek in bot mode, befitting a jet alt mode. Speaking of which, his shoulder armor looks great and has the right proportions to cover his arms while also sticking out enough to be striking on such a big bot. There's a lot of detail in his face and is where you mostly get hints of the prime aesthetics. However, given the style of his face, specifically with the plating that forms his mask, you would hardly tell it's not a G1 type style figure. So yes, he will also fit in with the rest of your G1 side line if that's what you're looking for. For me, that's perfect because I've never collected Prime figures and don't have any of the recent Legacy reproductions. He also has a bit of a Decepticon emblem designed for his face, similar to Tarn, Soundwave, and Nemesis, which is always a nice design choice. His side view is also really nicely proportioned with his wings sticking out a bit from the side view, but not looking out of place on this figure. You'll notice in these images that he has zero gaps on the main parts of his body. I don't usually take a shot from this angle, but I did want to show you in this case where there is a bit of a gap on the figure. In my opinion, I think it actually looks really cool, and since it is essentially the wing unit, it is perfectly fine to be designed in this way. You would never be able to tell from the front or back angles anyway. The back is also really well designed, with his wings coming together nicely to form one continuous unit. The way to design his smaller side wings to fold up onto the lower part of his legs is also very impressive and looks great. Skyquake is highly posable, and while his balance isn't 100% when trying to position him in different ways, you can get him into some really dramatic poses. Setting up figures with longer weapons over their shoulders in this way is always fun, and because of the way they designed his gun, you can actually have him hold it properly in his hand so it doesn't fall. I do love this action shot with one of the blast effects you can get with many of the bigger figures because it fits his Gatling gun so perfectly. His other weapon is a sword, and it's fine. I honestly don't care much for it, but if you want another bot with a sword or need one for another figure, it's fun to have. It does fold up and can be placed underneath his Gatling gun itself, so you don't have to worry about misplacing it. It stores tightly, so you can place it there and forget about it if you want. Like I said earlier, another nice thing about this figure is that the shoulder armor has a huge degree of freedom of movement, which works well for posing him in different positions, but also creates different looks for him, as I did here for example. Overall, I give this spot high marks for design and look. So with respect to the jet mode, I typically prefer the more standard modern plane styles, like the F-15, the F-22 Raptor, or slightly modified versions of them, like for the Coneheads. When it comes to futuristic styles, I only really ever liked Cyclonus. Because I found this guy on sale, I figured I'd give him a shot, because his futuristic Cybertronian jet mode seemed cool enough to have as a bonus Decepticon. Having seen the jet mode in person now, I do have to say it is extremely well designed and has a very sleek and fun design, with the back thrusters section giving the jet mode a huge awesomeness boost. 
Skyquake actually looks really cool on display like this as well and highlights all the jet's very nice features including the smooth aerodynamic form of his jet, his nicely proportioned wings, and the multiple back stabilizers giving him a Cybertronian F-22 Raptor feel. Everything mostly tucks away nicely as well on his undercarriage which is a very nice bonus. Overall I think the jet looks amazing especially if you want something a bit more Cybertronian but still being rooted in modern plane styles. The silver and red color accents are just enough to give the jet a nice grounded paint job and not going too over the top. Now this is where I was most impressed as the back of figures in their all modes can sometimes look very kibbly, especially where the feet or legs don't integrate well. In Skyquake's case, I think this thruster section is the most impressive and looks so aggressive. The three thrusters forming a triangle shape look so good up against the very sleek form of this jet mode. Any way you pose the jet highlights how awesome this part of the jet looks and you could seriously display him this way because of how impactful it is. As for the gun, there are a few ways you can attach it to the jet mode with this version being my favorite. However, since we only get one large gun, I prefer to leave it off altogether. Perhaps if there were two and it was a bit more aerodynamic, I'd keep them both on the wings. But even then, I feel it would take away from the sleek style of the jet. All right, onto the transformation. So first we're gonna start by lifting up these shoulder armor plates. You can see one of my mini wings is missing. It pops off a lot, so I just left it off. We're gonna push back the head a bit. It moves back and forwards. You'll see why in a minute. Let's flip this tab up where you're gonna put the fist in. And these actually stay up after you've pushed in the fists. And then we're just gonna push these lower arms slightly up. Um, that's going to be needed for the back when we tuck them away. Now turning it around we'll just flip these wings open like so and you can just roll them down a bit like that and now pull the lower part of the body apart from the top and then just lift up this whole cockpit section like so and this is why the head needs to be pushed back slightly because then you just cover it up with the cockpit section and close up the nose cone you can close this wheel now unless you want to keep it open um, alright now what we'll do is we'll start with the arms and we're gonna push them back so we're gonna lift them up 90 degrees like this first we'll do the same with the other one make sure the arms are still pushed into um, to the top portion and then you're just gonna flip them back and there's gonna be some tabs right here which will allow you to just click them together like this. We'll just leave them out like this for the moment. And now we'll flip the legs around 90 degrees so that we can make room for the wings to swivel up like so. And we'll do the same for the other one. And you can now just put the legs back the way they were and then you'll flip these two sections around 180 degrees like so and we will push them together they click into place that's pretty much the most of the part for the wings you can flip these front sections together like this and they just that part's a little wonky it sometimes gets loose um, now we'll just go to the arms that we left open like so and then just push them back right into this spot it fits in perfectly they're on ratchet so it's a little little tight okay now let's go to the legs close up the feet and then lift up these side wing stabilizers we're just gonna you see there's a tab we're just gonna push them in and just drop mine so obviously these click in like most parts which is great um, I'm gonna leave it in just to show you that even in the videos you know you can make some small mistakes I'll just do the same for this one I'll be a little more careful and now this is a tricky part until I did it a few times it took me a while but flipping these legs like so so you turn them in and then the bottom legs just curve in like this and then you take the whole leg and flip it around it's on a ratchet 
and I find this is the easiest, fastest way to do it. And there's a tab here. You're going to tab it into the leg so the wings stay tight against it. We'll do the same for the other side. Just clip these in. They're good tabs and they will hold. Keep everything tight together. You can flip up these back wings. And then this front portion, just have to uh, kind of wiggle them into place. And this sometimes gets loose, so I'm going to try to push it back in for you. Once it's in, it's really tight, but sometimes when it gets loose, it takes a bit of work. There you go. And then we'll just click it all together. And everything's nice and tight. And there you have it. The jet mode of Skyquake. You can open up the, the wheel like this. Um, some back wheels as well. I'll just put this this side fin back on, just so you can see how it all looks. And there you have it, Skyquake, ready to take to the air. Like I said earlier, he is a big bot. He definitely gives the impression that he is an enforcer and it totally works with his G1 character being a predator as well as his prime universe character being a guardian. In jet mode, he lines up well with all the other seekers and doesn't look that out of place to be honest. Looking at how he compares with some of the other Decepticon flyers, I've placed him against Blitzwing, which should be a big bot, as well as Cyclonus, who I think he lines up with a bit better size-wise. These jet modes also look really good together, though I thought they might look a bit better with the more futuristic style of Cyclonus. I think it's because Cyclonus is full-on a futuristic jet, while Skyquake borrows both from a futuristic Cybertronian aesthetic as well as a more modern F-22 style. As for Blitzwing with Skyquake, I wish they looked better together in jet mode, but as everyone knows, Blitzwing's jet mode is really bad with that undercarriage sticking out so much. If it wasn't there, I'd say these guys would look the best together. They really do line up almost perfectly and have complementary colors that would make these guys a good team up as part of an air squadron. It is still fun though to have them all next to each other showcasing the very different styles of the Decepticon Air Command. As I mentioned earlier, I like Skyquake's size given his role in the Decepticons and wanted to show you how he compares to Megatron. This is how I think Blitzwing should have lined up with Megatron and you can kind of get a feel of what I mean by using Skyquake as a stand-in. The reason I like this size difference I think comes from one of the not too long ago runs in IDW where they showed Blitzwing as an enforcer of sorts and had him standing next to Megatron. He just looks so cool that way and totally made sense that it's become somewhat etched in my mind now as a quintessential Blitzwing. As we don't have any universe figures in our collection to place them with, I've instead started here with a comparison to the IDW G1 storyline where Skyquake was in the Gladiator Pits with Megatron. I think this is a pretty cool way of incorporating him into our current displays, and I might actually keep him with my more IDW line of figures, taking the place of Blitzwing from those stories. I've also showcased him here one-on-one -on -one with some of the jet bots who I think he fits in with nicely. Not sure I'd ultimately display him with our 86 reformatted Decepticons display from the movie under Galvatron, but he does kind of look cool with Cyclonus in this mode. Out of all the jets, he somehow works best with the Seekers, and specifically in this case, Starscream. This is a nice display where Skyquake is on a stand while Starscream is a bit beneath him to give them a bit of a dynamic shot, especially from above. You can do the same with any of them, and actually I think he looks pretty good with Cyclonus as well. I immediately thought of Tarn when I saw Skyquake's faceplate and Gatling gun, so of course I had to showcase these guys together. Like I said earlier, I may actually display him this way with the IDW figures. If I do, he is definitely going with Tarn and or Minor Megatron. Not too shabby looking either place with Blitzwing. I thought he would look best with him, to be honest, when we first got him, but I think he may ultimately fit better with the IDW guys. And capping it all off, a display of all the styles of Decepticon jets together, which I think could make for a nice display as well. Let's quickly take a look at the box art. Nice front panel and very dynamic as is typical for this line. I kind of like the Dreadwing image a bit better on its box just because they have the small drawn with the Gatling gun. Really like the close-up features of his face here and totally dig the way they show both modes on these side panels. 
The back highlights the Evo Fusion gimmick and also shows how you can attach Needle Nose to his back in jet mode, kind of like the Cobra Night Raven from G.I. Joe. If we do ever get Needle Nose or another bot based off of his design, I'll show you how they attach in that review. I think Windsweeper from the Doom and Destruction 2 pack could look really good with Skyquake. So that brings us to the end of episode 25. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'm happy to say that all our new pre-orders are finally coming in, so expect all new reviews of all new figures from both Transformers and G.I. Joe Classified over the next several months. Thanks for sticking around, and see you all next episode. And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Drive home.